going over uh, ventricular fibrillation and pulseless VTAC. Uh, the changes from the previous protocols include uh, passive oxygenation via nasocannula at 4 liters per minute. Uh, vasopressin uh, was removed from the protocol. Amiodarone was in the previous protocol. It was not utilized by Anzal County EMS. Amiodarone will be utilized in the current protocol. A uh, dual sequential defibrillation procedure is added to the current protocol as well. Amiodarone indications are for treatment of VFib and pulseless VTAC. Contraindications uh, avoid in patients with heart blocks or profound bradycardia. Contraindicated in patients with an iodine sensitivity. Your adult dose will be 300 milligrams IV or IO. May repeat half dose of 150 milligrams IVIO for recurrent episodes. Your pediatric dose is 5 milligrams per kilogram IVIO push over 5 minutes. May repeat up to 15 milligrams per kilogram via IV or IO. Passive oxygenation, um, interruptions to chest compressions in the early stages of cardiac arrest to perform airway interventions are detrimental to the patient. Passive oxygenation into an airway early in cardiac arrest may improve patient outcomes. Uh, opening the uh, airway, providing 100% oxygen, intub intubation, and positive pressure ventilation used to be the gold standards of airway management. Research has shown that the survival rates for the out-of-hospital cardiac arrests are low. This is causing many CPR standards to be questioned. This has included the me methods of delivering oxygen, its ideal fraction, ventilation strategies, timing, and utilizing adjuncts other than the tracheal tube for maintenance of airway patency. A study by Bo Bro retrospectively analyzed 1,019 patients who were managed during resuscitation either with positive pressure bag mass ventilation or with passive insufflation of oxygen through an OPA. Significantly higher survival without neurological deficit was found in the pa passive oxygenation insufflation subgroup, 38.2% versus 25.8% through only, though only in witnessed v ventricular fibrillation or VTAC. While more research is needed, it can be said that passive ventilation oxygenation can be beneficial due to minimizing interruptions and in chest compressions during CPR. Uh, dual sequential defibrillation. Uh, the concept of dual sequential defibrillation was initially described in animal literature in the mid-1980s. Uh, it was presented in an article in the Journal of American Cardiology. Uh, using a canine model, investigators delivered single, double, and triple exponential shocks to hearts in which VFib and myocardial infarction had been introduced. The shocks were delivered one second apart and employed via different vectors or pathways across the heart. The researchers determined that two sequential shocks over different pathways reduce both total energy and peak voltage required to terminate ventricular fibrillation. Thus, both sequential shocks and multiple vectors help to reduce the ventricular fibrillation threshold and therefore terminate the arrhythmia. And there's just a citation at the bottom there. Um, <clears throat> The first mention of double sequential defibrillation in human cardiology literature was from electrophysiology teams at Yale, New Haven Hospital, and St. Francis Hospital. During routine electrophysiological testing of nearly 3,000 patients over a three-year period, five male patients experienced recurrent ventricular dysrhythmias, predominantly ventricular fibrillation. These patients were undergoing standard programmed electrical stimulation or having implantable defibrillator placement. The patients received between 7 and 20 defibrillation shocks at 200 to 360 joules prior to double sequential defibrillation being employed. The double se sequential technique worked during the first attempt in each patient. The shocks were delivered between 0.5 and 4.5 seconds apart. They used the anterior posterior and apex sternum orientations to deliver the shocks. No pharmacological agents were administered between the unsuccessful single defibrillation attempts and the successful double sequential conversion.
The teams theorize that the double sequential shocks reduce the ventricular fibrillation threshold, may override the relative refractory period of cardiac muscle, or possibly decrease transthoracic impedance, leading to a more effective electrical, de electrical delivery. They also felt that the change in vectors played a factor, effectively causing the shock to set up for the sub subsequent shock. They concluded their article with the statement, this technique may have general applicability to the emergency room setting, providing a simple and potentially life-saving approach to refractory ventricular fibrillation. More recently, there was a retrospective case series published in pre-hospital emergency care from a high-volume urban suburban EMS system. Over a two-year period, 10 patients were treated with double sequential defibrillation for refractory VFib. This was defined as VFib that persisted following at least five unsuccessful single shocks, epinephrine administration, and a dose of antiarrhythmic medication. Seven patients had su successful cardioversion, and three had ROSC. None, however, survived to a hospital discharge. This is just the placement. Um, the typical upper right chest and uh, left axillary for the first cardiac monitor placement, and then the second will be uh, posterior and anterior, uh, basically right over the heart for your second cardiac monitor. So this just kind of explains what I just said. The first set of pads are placed in the standard apex sternum position and the second set are placed in the anterior posterior position. Um, this is where I was not 100% sure. Um, <clears throat> so you set up both your pads on your both your monitors. Both monitors are set and charged to 150. Um, simultaneous delivery of 150 joules from both cardiac monitors are given. Sorry, is that right? Close enough. Okay. <laughs> Um, the first published uh, case report of delivering dual def defibrillation shocks in the field involved a 51-year-old obese male who suffered an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest and failed to respond to standard ACLS therapy for 25 minutes. Paramedics were treating the patient for an anterolateral STEMI when he suddenly developed V-fib in the back of the ambulance. The patient received several doses of epi, 300 milligrams of amiodarone, a supraglottic airway, and three shocks before arrival in the e emergency department. There, the patient received additional resuscitation medication and two additional shocks. For the sixth shock, the ED physician used two defibrillators to deliver a 400 joule dual shock, and the patient achieved ROSC. After stabilization, the cardiologist found 100% occlusion of the left anterior descending artery and provided a drug-eluting stent and intra-aortic balloon pump. The patient eventually made a full recovery with no neurological deficit. A uh, 19-year-old, it's another case study, 19-year-old male is a known heroin abuser to his friends and family. And after much encouragement, he successfully completes rehab and comes home. In honor of his return, return, his friends invite him to a house party to celebrate. Initially, the night's going well, but soon his friends become concerned when no one can find him. When they find him, the paramedics arrive and find him um, in V-fib. He's defibrillated at 200 joules using a bi biphasic defibrillator. There's a brief return of circulation with sinus tachycardia, but quickly decompensates back into VFib. CPR continues, 300 milligrams of amiodarone is administered and the patient is again defibrillated at 200 joules. He's converted back to a sinus rhythm with pulses and amiodarone drip is initiated. While obtaining a 12 lead ECG post ROSC, the patient's rhythm again decompensates, this time into, into dorsa, torsades. He's defibrillated again, this time at 360 joules, 2 grams of magnesium is administered via IV. There's a brief uh, return of circulation again to a sinus tack, but it reverts back into VFib, CPR reinitiated. Lidocaine, 100 milligrams, and epinephrine, 1, <clears throat> one milligram, are given via IV. Patients defibrillate an additional three times at 360 joules, this time with no conversion. 
I guess the second unit arrived and attached the, the second monitor. They did a double uh, sequential defibrillation and it's successful. The patient's converted into a normal sinus rhythm and there are no subsequent arrhythmias after the double sequential shock. The patient is transported to the ED if fluids wide open and he remains profoundly hypotensive. <sighs> Pulse dose uh, epinephrine is used to maintain a blood pressure while en route to the hospital. And there's my citation for that article. And I think that's it.